the Averly Stock Bandit Pack. Let's go. Now, I got all this gear on because we're out here doing some stuff. It's what we do. But today, we're talking about the pack. So let's get to that. I obviously could have camoed this thing up, spray painted it, added some more colors in there. The Coyote Brown for Averly Stock. Not too bad on its own. But I wanted to leave it in its original state because number one, I gotta show you guys what it actually looks like. Number two, well, you know, I don't always like to run around looking like rainbow. And a pack like this, it's brown, could be tactical brown. It actually could fit in in a regular scenario. So right now I have it loaded up for my modern Minuteman standardized loadout. If you're interested in that, what you should be carrying as a prepared citizen or whatever, standardized loadout, that's gonna be linked down in the description. Take a look around. It's kind of slim. It reminds me of like a small version of the skinny, what we call Alpine backpacks. So it doesn't stick out off your back a whole bunch. It's more tall and skinny. That leads to limiting how big and bulky you got on your back. You can get through tighter spaces and it also gives you maneuverability, mobility. If you don't have this big oblong thing sticking out off the sides and off of your back, like the Alice, it's a lot easier to get up and down three to five second rushes, climb up mountains, ropes, ladders, and all that stuff. You know what I'm talking about. So the volume for a guy like me is perfect for a day hiking bag, not super loaded down. Also an overnighter, maybe for an OP or just a quick chill camping trip where I don't need a lot of stuff in warmer months, okay, that's the key. Now in the cooler months, I might be able to strap some large sleeping bags down here on the bottom. I typically, personally, do not like to do that. I prefer to keep my sleeping bags inside the ruck for many reasons. So if you're cool with strapping sleeping bags and all kinds of stuff on the outside of your ruck, well, this might even work for a very light, minimalist winter bag for you. Now let's get to my favorites ergonomic as hell okay so i came in with the alice rucks and the first assault packs were actually our radio rucks which was like a updated alice ruck that was small and it's what we would put our singars radios into those big old boxy radios those were our assault packs in the early days then we got to like the army assault packs and things took off from there those did not fit comfortably by themselves. They were definitely not comfortable with any kind of gear on, especially a plate carrier back then an IBA. This thing, I've done a lot of hiking with this in nothing but a t-shirt, my summer shirts. I've done all the cool stuff I'm doing out here with plate carriers and my army chest rigs, LCEs, LBVs, old school Alice stuff. And guess what guys? It has been comfortable in every freaking setting. We got an eagle flying around. I've seen two in real life. Badass. You've got your load lifting straps and you can actually cinch down those things instead of like the backpackers. They leave them hanging and flopping all over the place. Us grunts, we gotta get those freaking straps tightened down, get them out of our way. They're not getting caught up in our face and up in the brush and getting ripped off. That's cool. You see the angle of the straps. All right, that fits the contour of your torso, <laughs> whatever. And then you've got these mesh pads, very thick mesh pads. It seems like it would be uncomfortable, but look at the rise. Look at that, man. Look at that cleavage in there. Look at that rise. Looks like it might be uncomfortable right out of the box. It's not. Did some hiking in a very cool park nearby. In about 100 degree heat, we were out all day. Of course, you're going to get some sweating back there. But because of this big old space, it is a lot less. You can adjust it to most sizes. I'm five foot nine and I have it almost all the way up. So if you're like six foot five, might be a problem for you. But I think everybody just over six feet and below, you'd be fine. This seems to be more of a hunting style of pack as an example it's not really molly they just have some thin straps up there they are tough they hold up fine but you don't really have molly it's okay though because molly 
actually works on it fine. Alice stuff actually works on it fine. So they give you all kinds of those all over the place. Top, all the sides. You can cinch stuff to the front. You've got these hooks to clip things on. I usually hang a cheap little compass right there just for quick reference. You've got these straps here to dilly dally stuff off of. And of course you've got your sternum strap. All right, then we have some laser cut down here on the back. Now this is where people, hunters will pack things. Small animals, trappers will strap stuff on there. Us tactical dudes, that's where our helmet goes. You can slide it right down in there, secure it in however way you want. I usually like to put the buckles through my chin strap on both sides, helmet's not going anywhere. However, for this setup, I just have my boo-boo kit, not my tactical combat tourniquets and shit, just a standard camping boo-boo kit right there, flip it out, get into it. Right up here on top, this is very important for any freaking outdoor bag. We need a small compartment up top in the upper flap where we can put small things, doodads and gear and stuff that we want to get to quickly, but we don't want to open the whole damn pack. You got room for stuff, plenty of stuff, plenty of volume. I've had my night vision in there. Oh, is the eagle coming over? Wow, it's right overhead. I do it. Yeah. America. <laughs> you answered me. Third one I've seen in real life. America. Okay, we got it. Shut up. Shoot the video. And in case you just need other pouches and stuff on the inside of the top pouch, you got a little mesh zipper pocket. Zipper works fine. Zipper's grunt proof. And a small little pocket. I've seen people put tools in there. I like to put my bug net my head bug head net bug something then it's out of my way you see it's not it's already getting tangled up and stuff but i like to keep that thing out of my way because they get snagged up on stuff and then you get mad and you tear them apart and then they're useless days worth of snacks in there we got batteries in a dry bag we've got freaking headlamps I would also put my PVS 14s and a pair of binoculars in there. No problem. Small spotting scope goes in there. You've got the side outside pockets. And you can also cinch down both pockets on this side too. So this is your one liter stainless steel bottle. Put it in there, cinch it down. It ain't coming out. What a lot of you guys really enjoy. You can open this thing top down and slam and cram your stuff in there, which is what I typically do. You can open this thing all the way and it's actually very easy. So for your gear inspections, or if you want to take care of your stuff pulling it out, there you go. Opens all the way out. So got my dry bag with some boohoo snivel gear. A day of rations. And we got our warm weather overnight bivy and sleep mat we've got a very light repainted wet weather top rain jacket and oh night vision harness these things have gotten a lot better you have a little spot for a camelback this because the pack is so small i would only put up to a two liter bag in there three liter bag is going to fill this up a whole bunch it might stick out up the top and it's gonna, you're gonna lose a lot of space. So I would go with a smaller camelback, water bladder, whatever you wanna call it. I don't use those in this kit because I got the bottle, but if you do, there's your little retaining strap. Keeps your camelback from falling down to the bottom. You got a pocket on the side. Sometimes I'll put tent stakes and sharp stuff in there so it's not stabbing in the rest of the bag. No rips or tears on that. You've got one camelback or hydration pack exit hole right there or an antenna hole, that's how you wanna run it. Over here, you've got your admin stuff, pens, small tools, and other doodads. And then down here on the side, you've got a small pocket to throw stuff in. Because of the size of this, it's not massive. I don't really need these inner compartments. Like I said, I will put sharp pokey things in there so we are not stabbing the rest of our stuff. And that's about it. But if you want to use those to separate things in the pack, you're good to go. These zippers are tough as hell, by the way. I've had this thing packed up and you just, 
you just grab these loops they give you and they make them hard and plastic for you for guys like me and i'll just shove it closed man just shove it cram it home but i still like to pack them top to bottom it's easier to stuff things in there you can close it up however you want but it is suggested look at that no baby in it is suggested that you close it up here somewhere put those two together somewhere up there not here where it pokes into your neck and annoys you but probably don't want to put it down here where it gets ripped off and ripped open and your stuff just freaking falls out so from here we would throw our helmet on there and this is in the way i'm not going to take it off bring this over it i like to put my chin strap buckle my chin strap and put one strap through each so it's not jiggling all around the straps are significantly long so i've got it tucked away here because i'm not using it all but they give you ample strappage to put all kinds of crap in there this helmet fits no problem so you can see about what kind of room you're working with if you're hanging a carcass off of that well it's gonna hold it the only weak part of the pack is this this is the only weak part okay so you're not going to carry a hundred pound freaking animal here you're not going to carry 240 barrels on here you could but think about how long that's going to be so this part is going to be for something like this similar size but where it's sewn i haven't had any problems yet that would be something i would be concerned about no issues with the helmet or other heavy stuff on hotter days i've put my two quart canteen with the alice buckles down in there put it in that way and cinch it up here two quarts or two liters is just over four pounds so there you go no problems at all doesn't jiggle jiggle of course i can't find the footage but i'll tell you guys the drag and drop tests although they are fun they're not always necessary why because i usually use those to supplement or replace long-term testing However, I've had this for over a year and I've used the crap out of it for over a year. So don't really need to do all those, you know, but it is what it is. You know, guys, sometimes through use, you just abuse stuff. It's falling off of trucks, quads, everything. It is what it is. So let's get it on. Oh, man. Well, we got one drop test, didn't explode let's go ahead and pick it up and get it on our back Ugh. you know in the grunt world we put on rucks by flipping them up over our heads Ugh. whoops slipped it's fine grunt proof approved there is the current price again for you. They have plenty of colors to choose from. Now that I have shown it off to you and we've given it a go, probably gonna spray paint it. Get some terrain on there, ghillie wash it. All right, grunts, y'all be good. See you in the next one, out.